Okay guys, sorry I had to split the video in two, there was just a little bit of a distraction. Okay, so what must actually be in your CV? Because now you have all this tips, but you're like, okay, but actually what I want to know is what I must put in. Because I've said, don't put this, don't put this, don't put this, what must you put in? Okay, so the stuff that needs to be in the CV to make it a full, um, proper CV, a complete CV is the following. Firstly, you can start with how would you fit into the school? Now, remember I said you need to do research on the school. So, if you know the aims and values and morals of the school, then you can create a little sentence that will invite the principal. This is the first thing that the principal reads about how would you fit into the school? How would your values and your morals fit into those of the school? So you will give a little sentence on that. I will fit into the school as I am a passionate learner. Um, I'm passionate about God's will and what God intends for the human beings or whatever, um, according to the saying of the school. Maybe you can give that in there. Then, personal information. Now, this is normal personal information. That is your name, surname, contact details, ID number, um, email address. You can put in there, are you male or female? Do you have a driver's license? It's all those normal information that is required from you. Okay. If you want to know really what it is, go to personal details on your bank. That basically gives you all of that information. Okay, so that's personal information. It's the most required information. Make sure that this personal information is correct. Okay, I have read CVs end of last year. We had to employ a new tutor coordinator on the APK campus. So I read quite a few of the CVs, the applications there and so on. And you won't believe it, but out of the six short list CVs, three of them had the incorrect cell phone number. So we couldn't get a hold of those applicants. And then what we should do? Luckily we had the email, luckily they were at the university, so we could get a hold of them in that way. But remember, the principal is not going to go through that effort. He's going to give his secretary the numbers of the six shortlist people, and he's going to say, phone here. If she comes back and says the number doesn't work, that doesn't give a good impression of you. That means that you are not attentive to detail and so on and so on and so on. So he's just going to leave you up. Make sure your personal information is correct. Make sure your name is spelled correct. Okay, this might be something that you take for granted that you quickly put in your name, but you know how many times you quickly type and you might get a typo. Not a spelling mistake, a typo. So instead of an E, you type an A or whatever. If this information is wrong, it gives a bad impression of you. Cell phone number needs to be correct. ID number, you have a very long ID number. Make sure that that is correct. Make sure that your email address is on there because a lot of them don't like to um, personally contact you. They want to email you as that is easier to email a whole group of people than to phone individually. So make sure that your email address is on there, active, and that you use it. Okay. Then check your emails every day if you've submitted a CV because you might know, not know that the appointment or the interview is tomorrow and you only check, check your emails every third day. Okay, so that is personal information that you need in your CV. Okay, then you have personal references. Now these are people that can reference your character, that know you very well. Okay, try and stay away from immediate family members. I'm talking about your mom, your dad, your sister. Okay. Try and stay away from those because people often think that they might lie because they are so close to you. Rather use a cousin or an uncle or a, a guardian or people that are not directly your family members. Okay. Those are personal information. Your friends, so on. Okay, then professional reference. A professional reference is a reference from colleagues, 
lecturers, um, anything in a professional setting. So you guys might not have work experience re yet, so you might not have an ex-boss or colleague might have, then you can put them in. But also lecturers that have taught you can be professional references. Now remember, if you do put a lecturer's name there, just inform them that you've put them in your CV because you don't want that principal to phone your lecturer and say, um, hi, uh, what kind of a student was Shanae at your university? And then they're like, um, who's that? Okay, that's also not a good thing. So just inform the lecturer that the principal might be phoning them, that they are ready for it and then they, they can give a good answer. Okay, and then any other employers that have employed you can also be under personal references. Then academics, your academic results. Firstly, you put your most recent academic result. So, this is not that applicable to you guys, but say for example, you've now done an honours or a masters. Your masters will be your first academic achievement. Then your honours, then your degree, then your matric certificate. So now for you guys, your degree will be first on your academic list, then your um, matric certificate, and then other diplomas or certificates that you might have done in school. So say for example, you did a, a drama diploma, that will be under matric certificate. So you work it from most recent to least recent achievements that you've done. Okay. So that's academics. So everything under academics is achievements that you have. So um, say for instance, you've done a sport, you've, you've had a very good sports achievement, then you can have a little subsection that says sport. So academics is poorly academics in school, in university, so on. And then you can have a little heading saying sport achievements, and then from the most recent to the least recent. If you in grade one, one the first, athletic competition, you can put that right at the bottom. Okay. Cool. Then your leadership. So your leadership achievements, once again, achievements go from most recent to least recent. So say, for example, you were class representative in your third year. That's the first leadership thing that you'll put up. Um, if you were a tutor, um, any leadership, anything that you had to say, leadership over people, that can put out, that you can put under there. If you were a head girl at school, um, remember my school will be first, primary school will be second. Maybe you were a uh, captain of a netball team, you'll put that in there. Anything that's leadership driven. And leadership is a very important part of your CV, especially for teachers, because teachers are in a leadership role, so your leadership must be quite fulfilled. Okay. Then you can put social media links. So if you have a YouTube channel, you can say, you can look at this YouTube channel to see um, in what way I teach, or these videos will give a summary of my world experience, or whatever links you have on there. Then also you can have a link to your Facebook account, your Twitter account and so on. And while we are on the social media link part, guys be careful of what you put on your social media. Even though you don't put the link in your CV, the principal is more than likely going to look up your Facebook page because the majority of people these days have Facebook. Don't put anything on your Facebook that you don't want other people to see. You are going to be a teacher, you are going to be a role model. So put role model things on your Facebook. Okay. Unfortunately, Facebook isn't that private. You can put your settings as private though, then they won't be able to see. But if you have a, a Facebook that is open to the public, be careful of what you put on there. Your profile picture may be of you holding a bottle of champagne on your 21st birthday and the principal might think that that is a bad picture for your school to have a teacher that drinks. Even though it was maybe just with the, the photo or it was a non-alcoholic bottle or whatever, remember photos to people tell stories 
and it might not be the truthful story that you wanted to tell. Okay, so be very careful of what you put on your social media. Statuses, remember, statuses can sometimes be a little bit harsh if you're in a bad mood and you quickly write a status on something and it might sound that you are biased or whatever the case may be. Just be careful of that. Okay, you don't want to not be employed because of something that was implied through your social media. Okay, now said about that, I think it's pretty self-explanatory in any way. So Twitter feeds anything, just be careful in the future. Okay, so these are little interesting ways in which you can put together your CV. So um, these people have taken an April page and used every dimension of the April page. So a little photo of themselves, the contact details with little pictures, languages that they are proficient, proficient in, skills that they are proficient in. So say for example, there's computer skills that you are proficient in, or you've done training in certain aspects, you can all list them there. And these can be links to things on the internet as well. So say for example, um, you are proficient in a program that the principal might not know about, you can have a little link that takes into a description of the program on the internet. Okay, so then you just copy and paste the URL there that they can go to. Okay, hobbies. Hobbies are a good thing to put in especially in schools that are driven by extramural activities, okay? So say, for example, the school has a drama club or a very um, active netball team or rugby team or soccer team or whatever the case may be, you can include your hobbies here. Now, you can see these hobbies that he's included are pictures. So he has a picture of a little camera. So that means that he likes filming or he's maybe a drama fanatic or so on, then you can have a little link to that as well. Say for example, you've written plays or you've done a, a drama degree or you've done a drama diploma or so on, then you can have a link that goes to that. Okay, you can even have a little um, subsection that explains these little pictures. He has a music note, so maybe he's musical, so on, then they can use him in the choir. Okay, there's a play, maybe he has a pilot's degree, and then there's a little motorcycle. So maybe he's very active, he drums, so on. Okay, so this is a very interesting way. And maybe the, the, the principal might not directly know what these pictures stand for. But that's maybe a good thing because it creates curiosity. And he's like, I want to find out what this person is interested in. We have a drama club, we have a, a choir, we have sports, we um, incorporated aeronautics into one of our subjects and we want a specialist in it. Maybe he can help us. And then in the interview, he'll ask you, what were these little pictures for? Are you this? Are you this? So creating curiosity is a good thing. Okay. So if we look at this side, uh, at this side, now he's getting to the more serious things. Okay, so um, his name, surname, personal profile. Maybe you can have a little explanation as to who you are. This can form part of that section where I say how can you fit into the school. That can fit into there. Um, you can say I'm a driven. Uh, active member of the community, I do this, I do this, I do this, that can be there. Achievements, okay, he has done it the other way around, where he's gone from 1990, 2001, 2014. I like to put my most recent achievements first, because that is the most important for me. But if you like me, want to, want to put it the other way around, that's up to you. So he's given the achievement a name in what he had was done and then a little description on the achievement. Okay, so that's his achievement. Then education. So you see, he split the achievements and education, whereas you can actually make this one. Okay, but 
as I said, if you have sports achievement, then maybe you want to put that under achievement and then education, purely educational, like university and school um, achievement. Okay, so once again, I would have put it from the most recent education achievement that I've done up to the last one. Okay, then work experience. Okay, this can be something that this can link to what I said to you, the personal and professional uh, references. Okay, so yeah, you can put your personal references, these people, because you've done work experience from there, and personal can be a personal reference, um, a character reference of yourself that you can put here. And then what I would add to what he's done is the leadership. Okay. But maybe you can put that under achievements. Leadership can go under achievements as well because the leadership achievements that you've done, you can, put it, you can have a subheading for leadership thing or whatever. So you have sport, leadership, um, extramural achievements. Then you can put all of that. Okay, so you can see how much information he has put into just an A4 page because he's used all of these dimensions and this you can do on um, PowerPoint okay if you want me to show you you can come to the tutorials on a Wednesday from 3 till 7 then I can show you how to use that because that's more of an interactive thing okay yeah is another one that I've also seen that's also very nice okay so um, she started off, she didn't want to put a picture of herself, so she made a little animation of herself, which is also fine. Then she had a little introduction description of herself. That is exactly what I said to you, how you fit into the school. There she's put that. Okay. Then this, what can I do for you? So this is basically all her um, uh, skills. Skills. That other guy has the little pictures in the side. She has the pictures, yeah, with little descriptions. So she has this little symbol, which is a symbol for design. Okay, so she can design things. She has a, uh, a little envelope. No, that is PowerPoint. PowerPoint symbol. So she's proficient in PowerPoint. She's proficient on a computer and all programs and so on. She's put all her achievements there. Then she's created a graph telling us how proficient is she in all of this. Okay, so that's a very cute thing to use because maybe you are proficient on a computer but not expert proficient. Okay, so then your graph for computer might just be up to there. You are in the middle. You are sufficiently proficient. Okay. But maybe in designing or in, let's say, for example, sports was one of your pictures, you are very proficient. You are an Olympian sporter, then your graph there will be full. So that, this is also a way for the principal to know how proficient are you in all of this. You say you can do all of this, but how well can you do all of these things? Okay. Then she has a little tab saying learning experience. So she's done it in a timeline. This is a very cute thing to do as well because in this timeline you can add a lot of information. You can basically sum up your academic achievement, your other achievements, sports achievement, drama achievements, all of that, and your um, work experience into one little line. So you put, you've, from the beginning to the end, you've done, you finished school in, whatever, you guys finished school in 2015, you finished school. So you got your matric certificate, you can say matric certificate, cum laude, um, you can even put your, your teacher's reference there, reference by teacher, whoever, her contact details, and attached is the reference letter or whatever. Then you can go to your first year, you were chosen as the universities in the university's netball team, you did this, you did this, you did this. 
your second year in 2017, you were chosen to be a tutor um, or a senior tutor or whatever the case may be. So all your things are put up to into a timeline, which saves a lot of space. Can you see that? This is actually a very, very nice thing to do. Then it says hire me, why they should hire her, and then her personal information is right at the bottom. Okay, and she's also added me. Her address, she's linked to, yeah, you know you can go on Google and search for your um, address and then it gives you a link to Google uh, Maps. So she's put that link in there. That's exactly what she says. Then her cell phone number, her um, Twitter account, her uh, name, surname, she's put that in there. And it's also an interactive thing. They can click on it and go to the exact place. Okay, so can you see, this is another very interesting way. If you've got this CV, it will be so nice to actually go through this CV because it's something new. You want to know, what does this button do? What does this stand for? What happens here? Okay, so this is also a very interesting one. Another interesting one that I've seen in the past is a video um, CV. Now, it's much easier to watch a five minute video CV than to actually read a video CV. Okay, so also think about that. Okay, then I just very quickly want to go through the interview process. Okay, so I know all of us are very nervous when you get into the interview process. We um, tend to forget and shut down and everything. Just calm down. The person interviewing you is also a person. Even though it's a principal, he's just a person. Okay, so don't worry if you've got this. Don't rehearse questions. Guys, don't let your mom ask you a question and then you go, my name is Chanel. What are your hobbies? My hobbies are, no, make it natural. Know yourself, prepare, read up, do research, do all these things. But don't rehearse questions. You want your interview to be as natural as possible. Okay. Formulate a strategy in your mind how you're going to answer questions. Are you going to start? Because a lot of the times they teach you start the question by repeating the question. Okay. What does this mean? So basically, if I ask you what is your name, you go, my name is. Because in that space that you repeat the question, you have time to think. What are your hobbies? My hobbies are. Okay, then you can quickly think about what you're going to say. So formulate a strategy. Whatever that strategy that might be, there are quite a few of them. To formulate that strategy. Okay, so have a mindset of what you would like to answer in the question. Don't use cliches. Now what is this? It's those people who say, I'm very hard working. Okay. Everybody that is a teacher is hard working. Be creative. Don't use that typical cliche. Because the, the principal would think something like that. Do you have a 40 hour um, work week? Oh, shame. I remember when I had my first part time job. Okay. Everybody is hard working. Think about something new. Now, I can tell you what is something, a skill, that 90% of today's youth don't have, and that's punctuality. Okay, guys, that's a real skill these days, and it's actually a basic skill. Okay, so show punctuality, then you will stand out. Okay, don't use big elaborate words. Don't go, I am sufficient in the art of computer literacy. See graphic design and no, you want the principal to actually know what you're talking about, so just be normal, answer in normal English. You're not gonna um, impress them by using big words, okay? Once again, don't lie, as in your CV, they will ask you questions about what you say, and if you're lying, you won't be able to answer. Be yourself, just relax. If you are a cool ass person, be that. Okay, don't try and be something that you're not. Okay, like for example, now these are the big words. I like decaf coffee. Just say you like coffee. Okay? 
Nobody cares what size of crop you have. Okay, then don't ramble on about your achievements. Okay, especially not in the first question. Okay, leave some of it for the second and third question because otherwise you're going to end up repeating yourself. Okay, they ask, what achievements did you have at school? I was the first team captain, I was head girl, I was uh, this, I was this and this. And then they ask you, oh, okay, um, how was your high school experience? I was first team captain, I was the principal, I was... No. Okay, stagger your achievements in the questions. Okay. Don't repeat your achievements all the time because they're going to be like, yes, we know you were a girl, go on with the next achievement. Okay. Okay, don't seem vain. It's not just me, 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 I, 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 I. No. Rather um, use the word we or uh, uh, as a group or whatever than I did this and I did this and I did this. Okay. Do your research on the school beforehand, know what the school stands for, exactly the same as in your CV. You need to know in the first place to know if you want to be at the school and in the second place to know um, what the school is about. Okay. First impression is last, dress accordingly. Okay. Don't get there in your tackies and your sweatpants. It doesn't look professional. It's not the way teachers dress in the first place. So rather dress it up. It's called power dressing. Power dressing means that you just feel better. If you've woken up in the morning and ever felt good about yourself. No, we don't feel good about ourselves in pajamas. But if you have a little suit on or a pencil skirt, high heels, you feel the part. Okay. And you need to look the part. As soon as you get in that door, that's the first impression that the principal has of you. So don't slanch, don't have an attitude, all these things, you make a good impression. Be humble, but also assert. Okay, um, so don't be late. Guys, if something happens halfway and you know you're not going to make it in time, get the contact details of the school and apologize firstly and then reschedule the interview. Don't just rock up there late. Okay, that's very bad. It shows a very bad impression. Okay, so you better be on time. Okay, know your PCK, know your subject that you are teaching because the principal is more than likely going to ask you questions about it. Know what you must earn by law. But don't ask questions about money in that interview. Because if you do get chosen as a teacher, you'll have a second interview, or not interview, a discussion on your, your money that you must earn. Don't go into the interview and at the end of the day ask, what questions do you have? How much money am I going to earn? In the first place, that shows that you don't know, which is not a good thing, because according to law, you must know what you must earn. And it's it senses a thing about arrogance and that you're there for the money and not there for the children. Okay, don't ask that question at the end of your interview. Wait if you are employed to come back and say, okay, now can I know, do I get these or these or these privileges in the school or whatever. Then, you did, then there's a section where you discuss your salary. But don't discuss it in your interview. Okay, always have a question at the end. Irrespectively, at the end of your interview, the principal is going to ask you, do you have any questions? Don't ever say no. Have some sort of question. A good question to have is, what extramural activities do you plan on introducing to the school? Then the principal knows that you are active, you're forward thinking, you want to be involved in the, in the school. So that is an example because that's not something that they'll say in the interview itself. Or what extramural activities can I get involved in or whatever the case may be. So always have that question for the end. Okay, then monitor your social media. I have spoken about this, guys. Please, this is very important actually. The principal is going to follow up on you and he's going to ask you. 
So we've looked at your Facebook page and we've noticed that in every single picture you have a bottle of whiskey in your hand. Okay, then you'll need to explain. You don't want to be put in that situation. Just monitor it. Remember guys, you can untag yourselves and so on. So be careful. Okay, once again, if there's another question, email me and I'll address it in a tutoring video. Thanks guys.